Hi everyone, welcome to Secret Sauce. Over the past decade, Kubernetes has changed the way we deploy, scale, and monitor software. And now we're learning that there are specific security challenges related to the container-based uh, architecture. With us this morning, Ron Ilani. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. Ron, you are the co-founder and CEO of PortShift, providing identity-based workload protection. That is correct. What exactly is that? So essentially when we first uh, started the company or founded the company, we understood that uh, the traditional network security solution simply won't work. What do you mean? Why, why shouldn't they work? Because of the dynamic nature of containers and Kubernetes. Containers and Kubernetes are essentially, the containers are rebooting constantly. We have auto-scaling, auto-configuration of those uh, workloads. IPs are never constant. So essentially we understood that you need a different way uh, to identify a workload at runtime. Mm -hmm. And from this reason, we have decided to change the way that uh, we, are, we are identifying the workload at runtime and uh, moreover, to be able to generate the identity of the workload from the pipeline itself, from the CI CD. Mm -hmm. Before we go into that, Absolutely. why is it so important to identify the workload at runtime? What are, what are the risks? of sticking to traditional security yeah, methods. So, so I think, uh, you know, many years ago, we all, we all know about a multi-factor authentication uh, solution. Every user has a way to identify itself before accessing his, its or his uh, uh, resources. We have text that we get in the uh, in mobile phone. We, have, we are getting alert that we are changing a machine to, from a machine to machine, obviously. So the question is how come in 2020 we don't have an identity solution that will essentially secure accessing between the workload, between the container to the same resources that again, that are again very much important for us uh, to protect. And with this notion, we essentially gone and uh, uh, invented the, the, uh, the notion of identity for a workload themselves. So, so basically you're taking the, the multi-factor authentication that we know from our mobile devices and you're taking that principle and applying it to workloads. That is correct. That is correct. And the risk is obviously because the, those environments are very, very much dynamic. Containers, again, are very much uh, dynamic uh, moving in the runtime environment. Um, we want to uh, sort of block the, uh, uh, I would say, option that uh, a crypto miner can get into a runtime environment without any uh, I would say, way of uh, protection. It can be by mistake. A developer downloads a specific open source from a specific location in the website and just do a, an SSH or accessing the runtime environment. And here you go, you have a new piece of code which is introduced in the runtime and you don't really have any type of control on the actual runtime. So the notion of uh, creating an identity for the workload itself needs to be uh, sort of be um, born in the pipeline itself and the CI CD. Mm -hmm. So who introduces the actual identity? I mean, does the developer need to decorate his own code or, or where does the identity happen? Yeah, so, so the whole notion or the whole design of uh, the solution should, should be uh, facilitated in such a way that it won't be intrusive. Uh, specifically, since we're dealing with DevOps and operation folks, that they want everything to be up and running and no hustle with configuration. So, so the whole solution, first of all, need to be SaaS enabled and, and to, to begin with. And the second thing, and not to be sort of uh, very tied into the actual process uh, or the actual coding of uh, uh, within the pipeline itself. So the way that the, uh, the solution hooks into the, into the pipeline is simply by installing a one-time plugin on the pipeline itself. And that's it. From this moment on, you can actually be able to identify what came from your pipeline itself and essentially everything else that got into runtime and didn't mm -hmm. come from, uh, from your pipeline, obviously, are, and protect the network itself. Are, are there specific uh, uh, infrastructure, specific vendors that you support, or are you vendor agnostic? So our ecosystem, to some extent, is, is, is driven by the pipeline. So uh, uh, any uh, CI, CD uh, vendor will be potentially a partner of, of ours. So JFrog, for instance, is a very good example. They are actually providing an artifact database Mm -hmm. which, we, which we can hook in and, uh, and obviously to create the identity of the workload before uh, protecting the runtime. Another example would be uh, Red Hat OpenShift yeah, with mm -hmm. their own solution for enterprises uh, with Kubernetes. Uh, again, hooking to their own infrastructure in order to uh, protect the runtime. Mm -hmm. So what does it take to actually uh, apply this, this solution? So it's, it's opening an account in, in, in the SaaS management server uh, that we have and installing a plugin on top of the pipeline on the CI CD that mm -hmm. you have in the Kubernetes cluster. And from this moment on, uh, you have the protection on your runtime, mm -hmm. which is part of the uh, solution. I understand. Uh, do you, uh, 
Well, we've seen we've seen a growing interest in this category. You're a, a fairly new player, right? You, you've existed for about two years. One and a half year. We are fairly a new startup. Mm -hmm. yes, but, but this is a, a red hot field, and and we, we we've seen activity here. We've seen a. a maybe a, a competitor of yours, a, a Aparedo, being purchased by Palo Alto. Where do you see this going? How do you see the, 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 the future of, of, uh, of security and protection in, in, in a container-based architecture? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this, this is a good question, and thank you for this. I think um, the, the fact that uh, uh, Aparedo was bought by Palo Alto Network is just another confirmation of the fact that, I mean, um, uh, the folks really understand that uh, we need to protect the workload uh, in a different way. We need an identity for the workload, obviously, to protect uh, our own runtime infrastructure and when we are talking about the network uh, network security. And speaking of which, when talking about network security, I think we see uh, two major trends. We have seen two major trends, uh, starting with the containers uh, four to five years ago. And now we are hearing about Kubernetes, which is an orchestration system for the containers, again, to make everything much more faster and orchestrate the, the container at runtime. And last but not least, we are hearing a lot about the service mesh. Uh, service mesh mm -hmm. is actually the, uh, um, the network infrastructure that binds or really connect between the uh, workload uh, at runtime. Uh, what Porchev does essentially is generating this type of identity from the uh, uh, pipeline itself towards the runtime and leverages the, uh, um, the service mesh, obviously. Uh, service, the service mesh itself will be something that we will hear much more about in the next uh, few, few years or so. Hashtag service mesh. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> something like this. <laughs> okay, Ron. Thank you very much. That's been very insightful. Absolutely. Thank you and was glad to be here. Thank you.